Breaking news. Oh my God. Oh, breaking news. ABC News Brian Ross is reporting. Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> now, even more so than I have been throughout the last year, that this nightmare presidency of Donald John Trump will end prematurely and end soon. If we discover that Donald Trump or his advocates played a role in helping to devise strategy, if they are the ones who came up with crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary, I think that is something that would put the question squarely on the table, whether or not he should be impeached. Okay, so we're going to have one more little video here on the the Mueller hearing I'm getting this one out just a little bit late there was one clip that I realized that I omitted that I think was very very powerful it po possibly even ripped into Mueller even worse than Jim Jordan so I have to give credit where credit is due it, it that the, the, the this really just took a chunk out of Mueller's ass in my opinion and it really showed even more than than as if we didn't have enough proof of the of, of what was going on here and, and and the double standard from uh Jim Jordan and others really tearing into Mueller you know Doug Collins um you know Nunez but <laughs> this this really showed the the corruption and, 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 and the fact Mueller's excuse oh it's out of my purview it's out of my purview you know to, to everything or that it, it out date you know it was before his it happened before his investigation started Matt Gates just points it out perfectly I've been seeing this clip everywhere so we're going to report on it here and get it out there Matt Gates pointing out that a lot of the other issues Mueller charged people with was before his investigation, yet he still charged them. And just like he didn't charge the man who told the FBI lie, three lies, possibly even has connections to Russia, uh, he, he, he didn't want to charge that guy who, you know, got this whole ball rolling. Okay, uh, J Joseph uh, Mifsud, he didn't want to charge him. Just like he didn't charge, you know, or, or really investigate some of these other issues that predated his investigation, yet he charged all these other people. I mean, it, it just, it, it points it out. I'm not going to say anymore. Let's just take a look. Director Mueller, can you state with confidence that the Steele dossier was not part of Russia's disinformation campaign? No, as I said in, the, uh, in my opening statement, I'm... Uh, uh, that uh, part of the uh, uh, building of the case was predated me and by at least 10 months. Yeah, I mean, Paul Manafort's alleged uh, crimes regarding tax evasion predated you. You had no problem charging them. And matter of fact, it, 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 this Steele dossier predated the attorney general, and he didn't have any problem answering the question. When Senator Cornyn asked the attorney general the exact question I asked you, director, the attorney general said, and I'm quoting, no. I can't state that with confidence, and that's one of the areas I'm reviewing. I'm concerned about it, and I don't think it's entirely speculative. Now, if something is not entirely speculative, then it must have some factual basis, but you identify no factual basis regarding the dossier or the possibility that it was part of the Russia disinformation campaign. Now, Christopher Steele's reporting is referenced in your report. Steele reported to the FBI that senior Russian foreign ministry figures, among with other, along with other Russians, told him that there was, and I'm quoting from the Steele dossier, extensive evidence of conspiracy between the Trump campaign team and the Kremlin. So here's my question. Did Russians really tell that to Christopher Steele, or did he just make it all up and was he lying to the FBI? Uh, let me back up a second if I could and say, as I uh, said earlier, uh, with regard to the Steele, uh, that uh, that's beyond my purview. No, it is exactly your purview, Director Mueller, and here's why. Only one of two things is possible, right? 
Either Steele made this whole thing up and there were never any Russians telling him of this vast criminal conspiracy that you didn't find, or Russians lied to Steele. Now, if Russians were lying to Steele to undermine our confidence in our duly elected president, that would seem to be precisely your purview because you stated in your opening that the organizing principle was to fully and thoroughly investigate Russia's interference. But you weren't interested in whether or not Russians were interfering through Christopher Steele. And if Steele was lying, then you should have charged him with lying like you charged a variety of other people. But you say nothing about this in your report. Well, meanwhile, sir. Meanwhile, Director, you're quite loquacious on other topics. You write 3,500 words about the June 9 meeting between the Trump campaign and Russian lawyer Veselnitskaya. You write on page 103 of your report that the president's legal team suggested, and I'm quoting from your report, that the meeting might have been a setup by individuals working with the firm that produced the Steele reporting. So I'm going to ask you a very easy question, Director Mueller. On the week of June 9, who did Russian lawyer Veselnitskaya meet with more frequently? The Trump campaign or Glenn Simpson, who was functionally acting as an operative for the Democratic National Committee? Well, what I think is missing here is the fact that uh, this is under investigation other in, uh, elsewhere in the Justice I Department. Get that, and if I can finish, sir, and if I can finish, sir, and consequently, it's not within my purview. Uh, Department of Justice and FBI should be responsive to questions on this particular but, but issue. It is absurd to suggest that a operative for the Democrats was meeting with this Russian lawyer the day before and the day after the Trump Tower meeting, and yet that's not something you reference. Now, Glenn Simpson testified under oath he had dinner with Veselnitskaya the day before and the day after this meeting with the Trump team. Do you have any basis as you sit here today to believe that Steele was lying? As I said before, and I'll say again, it's not my purview. Others are investigating what you uh, so, so it's not your address. purview to look into whether or not Steele's lying. It's not your purview to look into whether or not anti-Trump Russians are lying to Steele. And it's not your purview to look at whether or not Glenn Simpson was meeting with the Russians the day before and the day after you write 3,500 words about the Trump campaign meeting. So I'm wondering what, how, the, how these decisions are guided. I look at the Inspector General's report. I'm citing from page 404 of the Inspector General's report. It states, page stated, Trump's not ever going to be president, right? Right. Strzok replied, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Also in the Inspector General's report, there's someone identified as attorney number two. Attorney number two, this is page 419, replied, hell no and then added, viva la resistance. Attorney number two in the Inspector General's report and Strzok both worked on your team, didn't they? Pardon me, can you ask? They, uh, they both worked on your team, didn't they? Uh, I know, I heard Strzok. Who else were you talking about? Attorney number two identified in the Inspector General's report. Okay, and the question was? Did he work for you? The guy who said viva la resistance. Peter, Peter Strzok worked for me for a period of time, yes. Yeah, but so did the other guy that said Viva La Resistance. And here's what I'm kind of noticing, Director Mueller. When people associated with Trump lied, you threw the book at them. When Christopher Steele lied, nothing. And so it seems to be that when Glenn Simpson met with Russians, nothing. When the Trump campaign met with Russians, 3,500 words. And maybe the reason why there are this discrepancies in what you focused on is because the team time was the, so biased. Time of the gentleman has expired. Pledge to Mr. stop Trump. Jeff Total knockout. Just total, complete knockout with that one. So, let's do a brief recap. And then wrap all this Mueller business up. Doug Collins exposes the fact. Mueller has no clue what's in his own report. It clearly wasn't him in charge of this investigation, but the team of angry Democrats, as Trump's called them in tweets, so he exposes that Mueller, who chose his words carefully, well, somebody else chose those words carefully for him. He has no clue literally what's within his own report. Okay. We, we then later move forward. Louis Gomert rips into him about the struck page connection. Really embarrasses him there. Okay. Turner exposes the, the, the fact that, you know, uh, innocent till proven guilty wasn't applied uh, and there was a lot of other you know uh, congressmen who pointed that out throughout the day also okay and then Matt Gates, th th this clip this really drives it home where you know uh, and, and Jim Jordan of course also pointing out you know 
He didn't charge Joseph Misfoot, who lied to the FBI on three different occasions, arguably got this whole ball rolling in the first place. And, you know, Matt, Matt Gates now points out kind of that same thing. And, of course, Mueller's response, you know, Oh, it's out, it's out of my purview. Or, or the other one, I can't get into that. I can't get into that. Again, 200 questions right at that this guy didn't want to answer. Okay? And, and, and I still find that outrageous that he can even get away with that. But nonetheless, you know, Matt, Matt Gates tears into him. Why didn't you really look into this Steele dossier more? Oh, well, this was uh, going on before my investigation. So was all of Paul Manafort's bank fraud charges. Yet you were able to charge him. Complete double standard here, I would say. You know? So, hey, it, 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 it is what it is, you know? One big Capitol Hill fiasco. But Matt Gates, I, I think that, that this was one of the nails in the coffin for that whole debacle. All right? Y'all have a good day. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Independent Report. If you like the video, please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, ring that bell so you'll receive notifications when we drop new videos. I'm trying to grow this channel and inform more people of what's going on in the world around them. Thank you for your support and we hope you tune in next time.